Okay, I'm not sure how well this is going to come out, but I wanted to show something uh, that I'm doing when I'm printing my plug board. So you can see this is getting towards the end of printing the main part of the plug board. And at the moment, it's printing the lettering uh, that goes on top of each of the, the little plugs, the little sockets. What I want to try doing is what I did on the, um, on the rotors here, which is print in two colours. So what I'm hoping is I can show how I do that. So what I actually do, uh, you can see the print's finished there. What's actually just happened is I created the STL file in the normal way and then I modify the g-code manually to put in a pause function and then a home command which I think off the top of my head is g28 something like that. Um, so what's actually happened now is the, the print is paused. So the print hasn't actually finished. If we look in here, I don't know if you can see the screen, um, it's actually got 98.64% to go. So two minutes. Um, so what I'm actually going to do now is, this is all still on, so, so the bed's still hot, the extruder's still hot, you, you can see that here. Um, what I'm going to do is change the filament out for uh, this white filament. I don't have much left, but I should have enough just to, to do the lettering here. And then we'll let the print continue and see how that goes. Um, I was just going to change the filament, but I thought I'll actually go through the process of, of what I actually do. Um, this may be kind of obvious to most people, but we'll do it anyway. So I'm using Repetier Server. So in here, you can see the, the print is paused. There's a continue button there. What we can do is uh, go into the control and I always increase the, um, the extrude rate, the fast extrude rate to 300. And I want to extrude 100 millimeters. And then I just tell it to extrude. And so that's pulling the filament backwards. Um, you probably can't really see it, but that's, that's now pulled the filament out of the extruder. So what I usually do then is um, I actually have these little lights, which are quite handy. Is I manually pull the, the filament through. So um, I'm actually going to have to to turn the camera off while I do this, stop filming, just so I can um, change the filament. But what I actually do here is I, I just ex I just um, reverse the extruder enough to pull it out of the actual extruder body. Um, this is where the end of the filament is now. So what I'll do is just manually pull that out and then manually put in the new filament and then I'll restart the filming. So what I've done now is swap the filament out for the white filament. Uh, one thing I should mention is this, this little, oops, a bit hard to reach around the printer, this little thing. Um, this is a, a lubricator that just sits on the filament. The filament sort of pulls through it, obviously. It can't get pulled through the, the feeder. Um, and this just has a little piece of foam in it. And I just lubricate that with a, a few drops of um, just vegetable oil. I just have this little syringe. And I, I just put a few drops in there. And I've just found that helps with um, lubricating the filament and getting it to feed nicely through the you know, the, um, this long um, Bowden cable, or Bowden tube I've got. Um, I find that just helps to um, keep everything smooth. I, I've not had too much problem with jamming. Um, I did actually have it jam up a couple of times before I started using that, but after I started using that, I've, I've never had a problem. So I find it's a good thing to do. Um, the, the pattern for that is a, it's a thing on Thingiverse somewhere. I think there's more than one, there's all sorts of different different kinds, but um, that works very well. So and now what I've, what I've got is the, the white filaments spooled up and I manually push it all the way down into here and then now I just um, feed it through. So just using the slow speed, feed through a few hundred millimeters just to clear out the, the extruder, the nozzle. Um, White, I find, is a bit of an annoying colour because you, you have to extrude a bit to make sure it's completely cleared out of the extruder, the previous colour. 
because you can see there you um there's a bit of black in there so um you can hear it slipping a little bit because just because i'm pushing through so much so quickly but uh Let's so we'll let that finish. Even after the extruder stops, you still get a little bit of filament coming out. So what I'm going to do is let that finish dribbling. And then we should just be able to restart the print. And it should continue printing from where it left off. Um, and finish off the, the top few layers of the lettering in the white filament. So the reason I'm doing this is because this is the... Uh, the first version of the plug board I did and this is perfectly usable so if my dual color thing doesn't work I'm going to be using this one and you can see the the lettering is just raised um, like I say this is completely usable perfectly fine um, but the letters can be a little bit tricky to see so this will just just improve the contrast um, you can see as a test I've got two of my plug sockets in there it's going to be pretty tight on the back of the board, so the wiring is going to be quite interesting. Um, these are the little 4mm sockets that I got that uh, accept banana plugs. And that's where the power connection is going to be made. Um, the original Polish double, uh, the switch, which actually goes up and down, not left and right. The switch was for switching between a uh, 220 input and a 4 volt input, I believe. Um, four volts being what the the original enigmas use uh, i'm not sure actually what kind of battery they used um, so i know it's a four volt battery but i don't know what type of cells they were um, it'll be something interesting to find out i'll see if i can find that out but this the plug board of course because you're going to be inserting and removing plugs i need it to be quite stable so there's actually going to be um all these these mounting legs pillars so 10 of those to hold it and of course on the machine this will go at the back here um, oh you can see the the other piece I've printed recently is uh, just this piece which is just a very simple holder for the two spare rotors um, Again, I've mentioned before, on the original Enigma machines, the German Enigmas, the battery goes in here. Um, on the Polish one, they actually use that as the storage for the, the two spare rotors. So these just, just slot in there, like that. Um, but as I say, the, the plug board will go in here. One thing I'm not entirely certain is the height of it. Um, it's it's not right at the top that's actually a bit lower down there aren't very many good photos uh, that i've found off the uh, the polish double and a lot of the photos are from the top and if it's directly from the top like that you can't see the height of this so i suspect it's probably similar to the height of that that's probably what i'm going to make it so the the plug board will go in there and then I guess that means when the, the lid of the box is closed, there's room in there for all those cables. So there'll be 10, uh, 10 cables that go in there. So I, I'll, I'll figure out the height of this based on that, but I, I suspect it'll be level with that, which is, which is aesthetically, that looks correct anyway. Uh, so let's go back to this printer. So if I remove that, uh, it's, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see there that's the, the white and it's got a little bit of the black in it still. Um, I usually give it another feed through just to make sure because I've, I've found when I think it really is clean, you print a little bit and you get a little bit more of the previous color. So um, if you just run the extruder free like this, you often get these little sort of hangman noose type things happen as it builds up the filament and then it gets heavy enough to drop off so again that's the, the extruder skipping a little bit um, one thing i'm thinking about doing on my printer is actually making this cooling shroud smaller um, 
there's no reason I need to do that. It's uh, just so that when I've got the camera set up pointing at the printer, I can I can see more. So that stopped extruding. We'll um, wait for the flow to just stop. Now the one thing you have to be careful of. Um, I don't know if I can bring up the actual G code. Let's see. So yeah, this is the this is the actual command that I've got in here that's paused the print. So you can see I home it and then um, use this pause command, which is a, a repetir command. So you can see this is right at the end of the file. This is, this is quite a big file, of course. So it's now paused. So effectively in the G code, we're sitting at this point, uh, which is line 267,705. So that shows how big these G code files get. Um, once we continue, it'll go to this line and then this should reposition the extruder in the correct place. Um, this is where things could go horribly wrong. So hopefully it'll be able to recover its position and the proper Z height, which is this um, G1 command. And with a bit of luck, it'll just continue printing from the exact right place. So let's if we go back to our print. So if we say continue now, it should just continue on. So this is it repositioning. So it looks like it's gone to the right place. And you may just be able to see the lettering is now being done uh, in the white color. Uh, I'm actually only doing the top three layers. So I'm not sure if that's going to be enough white to really make the letters stand out. Um, I probably should have done a test of this before I actually committed to this whole print and, and trying it, but we'll give it a go and see how it comes out. So I'll let this finish for the next couple of minutes and then we'll have another look at it. Okay, this is almost finished now. Um, I probably could have just kept the camera going because it's not taking very long at all. So that's the end of the print. Now, it has, oh, it's very difficult to see, but um, no, there we go. The, I think that's in focus. So you can see now the, the top few layers of the, the letters were done, finished off in the white, um, and it just makes them stand out a lot better. I maybe could have made the letters a few layers deeper, and um, that may have helped, but I think that's actually good enough. So yeah, that's worked well. Um, if I really wanted to get fiddly, I could maybe try um, manually modifying the G-code, creating a new file that just starts printing from those last few layers. So if I wanted to add another couple of layers to that, I could manually create a G-code file just with the stuff I need in it um, to, to finish printing those last three layers. But I think trying to do that on top of what, what's already there would, would just make it messy. So that's worked well. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention was, like I say, I, I printed this one out first. Before printing this whole piece, I mean, this is a very simple print. This is, it's a, it's a flat piece, basically. It's not, not very complex. Um, the modeling of it was pretty easy. So um, I think in Fusion 360, that's sort of like version one. Um, whereas some of my other models are up to, to version you know, 28 or something. So this was easy to do, but even, even with something simple like this, what I like to do is I basically print out the, um, a 2D version. So I take the, the file from Fusion 360 and you can save it as a um, DXF file and then import that into a graphics program and print it out. So I actually use Inkscape to, to manipulate the, the DXFs and then I can print them out at one to one scale. And what that allowed me to do is actually check that my sockets were going to fit. So I can print out where they go, cut the holes with a scalpel, stick the sockets in as a test and just make sure there's going to be enough clearance around them. 
uh, which is why I do that. So what I'll do is I'll pop this off the printer, I'll um, put in all the sockets and things and the switches and, and the, the um, power plugs and we'll have a look what it looks like. Okay, let's see how this plug board turned out. Uh, I've temporarily inserted all the sockets. Uh, you can see it's pretty dense. The um, the wiring of this is going to be quite a quite a fiddly job. So obviously I'm going to have to take all these out again and probably start wiring from one end all the way down to be able to keep it all neat and tidy. Um, hopefully you can see on there how the the white lettering stands out a lot better. Um, I'm quite pleased with how that's come out actually. In bright light there there isn't actually a lot of contrast between the the silver and the white. Um, in these lower light settings it actually looks really good. Um, I've also turned the little switch around. Obviously I don't really need a switch on it but the the um, original Polish machine had a switch there so I, I added it in. I already had that switch there. Um, I still need to make the the 10 supports of course and that's almost everything mechanically done on the machine the only other thing i need to do is uh, the top cover that will go over here and there may be little silver pieces that go around the windows and just a few little details like that so these slots uh, in the bottom of the plug board what i plan to do the one of the issues I have is I've got blueprints for an Enigma machine, the ones I got offline. Now there are different models of Enigma machines, so th there isn't just one set of plans. There are all sorts of different machines. Uh, the problem I have is what I was mentioning before. I, I don't actually know where this is meant to go on the Polish machine, what sort of height it needs to be at. So I think it's going to be about there or maybe a little bit higher. Um, that's going to determine how my top cover works because what I actually want to do is the back of the top cover will fit, have little tabs that fit into these slots and it's just basically going to sit on top there. Um, the other thing is my my temporary wooden base. Obviously I, I made this uh, when I was, before I decided to make the, the Polish machines. So I need to redrill this temporary base so that I can shift everything forwards so I've got room to, to add my plug board at the back. Uh, I'll need to start looking for the, the baseboard now, the base plate. Uh, what I actually want is a, a piece of aluminium like I've used on the machine here, but I don't have a piece big enough. So I need to, to um, find a slightly larger piece of this, this aluminium plate. So I think that's kind of it at the moment. Um, once I remount this on the wooden base. I say mount, but most of it's just sitting there. Um, and build the little the little stands for the plug board. I should be able to sit everything where it needs to go and have a pretty good idea what the the final machine will actually look like. So I'll update that when I've done it.